Welcome to the Black Pearl Radio Show. I'm your host, Mr. Tyler. And on today's panel, we have three beautiful ladies, young ladies, who are going to be talking about everything related to children's picture books. Um, we're going to get into a lot of details for those of you who are future authors, illustrators, publishers. Um, we're going to be talking about the business. We're going to be talking about the process. We're going to be talking about their books and how they got started. Um, and we're going to be giving tips and advice how to help you guys create your own children's pictures books as well. When I say children's pictures books, I'm thinking of like 10 year olds and under. Um, that's kind of the age range I'm thinking about. But the ladies might be writing for a little bit of older children, but we'll see. So I'm going to have them introduce themselves and then we'll get right into it. I'm going to start with Veronica. Tell the beautiful people out there where you're from, what you do, a little bit about your background really quickly, and then we'll move on to the next person. Sure. My name is Veronica. I'm from New Jersey. Um, I am the founder of a company called Box Out Enterprises, which means to think outside the box to design creative solutions for social change. And out of that has come um, three things that are relevant to this talk. Two children's books that I published. One is called King Khalid is Proud and the other is called I Know I Can. And as a result of promoting my children's books, I learned that people were having a hard time finding books with Black characters. So then I started the Instagram community, Black Baby Books, um, where we make it easier to discover children's books with Black characters. And in terms of just background, I, like I said, I'm from New Jersey. I went to Spelman College undergrad, um, majored in Spanish and minored in business. And I have a, an MBA from Babson College in Massachusetts, which is where I live now in Massachusetts. <laughs> Outstanding, and thank you for joining the panel. Next up, I'm gonna to go to Miss Desiree. Uh, okay, um, my name is Desiree Williams. I'm from Buffalo, New York, born and raised. Um, I went to the university at Buffalo where I got my undergrad in psychology and I'm with a minor in African American studies. Um, I have my master's in school psychology from the university at Buffalo as well. Um, as a profession, I'm a school psychologist, so I do um, counseling with students, I do evaluations for special education, um, I help teachers create um, individual educational plans for students, um, run like tiered supports in the school building and things like that. Um, recently, I finished my first children's book called Brilliant Brown Babies, um, so I'm fairly new to the children's book publishing world, but um, so far, it's been really exciting. So I'm excited to be here. And thank you very much. We're excited to have you. And Ms. Keisha, you are up next. Hi there. My name is Keisha Lewis Nesbitt, and I am here from Fresno, California. However, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California, and I've been living here for about two and a half years. So I live here with my teenage son, Landon. I am a registered nurse, so currently I'm working for an organization and we own clinics all over Fresno. So we're pretty busy right now. So my role here is a director of nursing. So I'm over all the nurses. We have about 20 nurses, probably about 50, 60 medical assistants. So currently our busiest time right now is we are assessment sites for the COVID testing. So we get quite a bit of patients on a regular basis. So my newfound passion has been um, my first as Desiree, writing a children's book. So I, with a few young ladies, we were part of a publishing group called Discover the World of Nursing, which was founded by Dr. Romitrius Moss. She's also a registered nurse. And we were just kind of having dialogue about a lot of brown boys and girls. They don't always know the different aspects of nursing. They just know, oh, the nurse works in the hospital. Oh, the nurse works in the doctor's office. And sometimes that's not enough to really engage a young child into nursing. So what we decided was we would develop a series of books and we would reach out to elementary age because that's usually when you start deciding what you may want to be. And so everyone wrote a different book on different aspects of nursing. So mine is Discover the World of Nursing, Become a Home Health Nurse. So for me, I wanted to bring out to small children that you don't have to work inside of a hospital or inside of a clinic. You can go to patients' homes day to day. You can see different ages. You can see women. You can see children. You can see geriatric patients. And you just make your schedule, and it's more freelance. But at the same time, you're getting work done. 
you're out in the community providing education and making sure that the patients don't return back to the hospital. That's the main goal of home health. So with that being said, it's been a good turnout. We've gotten a lot of interesting and awesome support on our topics. Um, we have topics on become a labor and delivery nurse, become an emergency room nurse, become a, even a nursing instructor. So these are all different aspects and they are geared towards brown boys and girls. And with that being said, that's it in about a nutshell. All right, that was a long intro. And you also answered my first question was why write a children's book? So I got that answer from you. So I'm gonna come to Veronica and that's my first question to you. Why did you wanna write a children's book? Everything, you know, it's one of those things where I am a creative and I made a decision a long time ago to dedicate my time and talents to the issues of the world that mean the most to me. And for me, making sure that Black children are empowered, both in the United States and throughout the diaspora, where we are raising Black children in hostile environments where, you know, like our intelligence isn't acknowledged and all of the, you know, our humanity in so many ways isn't um, valued and acknowledged, acknowledged where we're raising children. So I just want to make sure that I wrote books that helped empower children so that even though they're highly likely to encounter some sort of racism or um, anything that kind of like discounts who they are just because of who they look like, that they have within themselves the self self-esteem to combat that and any kind of internalized racism that may be as a result of growing up in these kind of environments. Interesting. Thank you for sharing. Desiree, same question for you. Why did you want to write a children's book? Um, so when I started um, working as a school psychologist, I've always predominantly worked in inner city communities um, with the, where the population is mostly African-American children. And you know, a part of my role as a school psychologist is doing evaluations and identifying students for special education. And nationally, there's a disproportionate um, rate of African American students in special education. And, you know, through the testing that I do and talking to parents and teachers and things like that, the reason that they're in special education, it's never because they're less intelligent than their counterparts, or they're less brilliant as to say than their counterparts. Um, it's always a very, um, it's a lot more underneath the surface of why they're being referred for special education and why they're being identified as having disabilities. Um, things like trauma, things like, um, you know, poverty, things like, you know, just the ingrained racism that's in America, things that, you know, the portrayals that you see of African Americans in the media, you know, it affects children's self-esteem, things like that. So when I had my son, I wanted to make sure that he, um, you know, was always given positive representations of himself so that he grew up and he knew that when he went out into the world and to society, even if everyone else looked at him in a certain type of way, he had that instilled, ingrained, sense of self-worth and I wanted to do that through a, a number of different ways but one way was through children's books and so I would read to him every night and it, I found it very difficult to find books with characters that looked like him and um, empowered him and um, you know explained how amazing it is to be African-American but at the same time spoke to audiences that were very young because there are are books like that, but they are for, I think, older audiences or a little bit more mature. So I decided to write the book I was looking for. Um, and it started off as just a hobby and it um, kind of took off into something that I wanted to share with the rest of the world. And here, here I am now. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate the work that you put out. Okay. Um, so my name is Jaya and I wanted to write a children's book because I, I came in kind of late, but I heard like a few of you guys talking. Um, but like my career, I work in a school also and I'm speech pathologist assistant. So that definitely motivated me. I've worked in several states because I worked for a contracted agency. And one thing I noticed like traveling across the country was that 
um, like y'all, you guys all noticed, the lack of diversity in children's books. So that definitely motivated me. And then it was something like I wanted to use my own books that I've written that I knew my students could relate to and like implement them in my therapy session. So that was definitely the reason why. All right, so I noticed you all, all of you guys, the reason you're writing books is because you wanted to solve a problem. And the problem is what's going on in society, which is lack of diversity, um, lack of opportunity for our young brown and brown boys and girls, um, which is a wonderful thing. So I was reading a news article and they were talking about statistics. And in 2018, the article said that out of all the children who were drawn and featured in picture books, 50% of them are Caucasian children, 50% are white children. Then the next group was animals. And I think it was about 23% were animals or objects or things like that. Then the next group was black African Americans. And that was 10%. And then from there, I think Latinos, Asians were next, like 7%. Latinos, I think, were 5%. And Native Americans were 1%. Right? So when our children are looking at these images, whether it be on television, magazines, social media, and in children's books, catching them at a very young age, um, we're seeing white people as kings, queens, superheroes, saving mm -hmm. the day. And, you know, a black kid might be a small character in the book, but the black kid is not the feature of the book and definitely not in a positive light when we also talk about stereotypes. Um, so I'm going to go to Desiree first and I want you kind of to address that article and what are your feelings about that and how does that relate to your books? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I've seen the article that you are talking about and I saw the picture where it showed you know the different percentages and things like that and um, you know, it's, it's, I hate to say it wasn't very surprising to me to see that. Um, I think that animals come before African American children because mm. to write about an animal would be, you know, for some people it's safe, it's more um, inclusive <laughs> because you, if, if you write a book about an animal, you're thinking every child can relate to that book or read that book or will want to buy that book. It's more marketable than if you were to write a book about an African-American child, because what I'm finding is when I wrote my book, um, you know, when I wrote about African-American children, I found that mostly African-American children and families were excited about the book and wanted to read the book, but I didn't get a lot of Caucasian or Asian or Hispanic people who um, were drawn to the book as well. And I think the misconception is that when a book or a movie or a TV show has African-American characters, it's only for African-American people. Um, mm. So I think that authors a lot of times will write things about, you know, animals or objects or things like that because it's more marketable. They think it will sell more than if they write about um, a minority group. Um, so for my book, I did um, want to make sure that, you know, it, it's called Brilliant Brown Babies. I did write it for, with African-American, um, black and brown children in mind. But I think it's important that all children are exposed to books with African-American characters because research has shown that, um, you know, if any, as any race, it, as you're exposed to um, different minority groups, it increases your social emotional awareness and it really just makes you a better, more well-rounded human being in society to be exposed to different types of people and to know that you know not only white people are kings and queens and brilliant but black people are kings and queens and brilliant and hispanic people are kings and queens and brilliant and asian people are king you know i think that that well-roundedness is important for all children to grow up with learning keisha i'm going to come to you what do you think about that question when it comes to diversity in children's books i think it's really important because i have a teenage son so we're not into the nighttime storytelling phase anymore, but I found that when he was younger, there were no books really that I was even exposed to. Maybe a couple then here and there, but not many. But I think children pattern what they see. So if you model them at a certain very young age, then just by modeling good behavior and exposing them to different aspects of the world, 
you know, we really capture them at a young age because when you're in that elementary age, you really have a full imagination and that's when your, your thought process is really forming. So I think it's an excellent time because children are really interested. They're very imaginative. You know, they have thoughts of their own. By the time they become a teenager, you know, they're on into their own things. So I think it's an excellent time and place to make sure that our children especially are receiving the information that they need from us by us. Excellent. Thank you. And I want to come to Veronica. I want to give you a different twist on the same question about diversity. When we look at Disney projects and other companies' projects, you know, little white kids is always the queens and the kings and you got to kiss the prince and, you know, all this good stuff. And, and it's fun, but it's not us on the screen. It's not us on the page. Um, when you're developing your books, do you consider diversity for any of your characters? When you say diversity, do you mean... Besides the fact that I focus on Black characters, do I incorporate other, other races? In correct, life? correct. Okay, so I'll talk to you about how I deal with diversity. So, so in my books, all the characters are Black. Um, I have a Black male teacher in one of my books. That's really rare. Um, the way that I tackle diversity is, as I mentioned before, my interest is in making sure that Black children of the diaspora are empowered and so for me my focus has been on not only publishing my books in english but also publishing them in other language spoken spoken uh, other languages spoken by other children of the diaspora so in brazil which has you know the the largest black population outside of the continent you know i had my book translated into brazilian portuguese and i had it translated into spanish and i partnered with a, a company called afro latino travel that that collects books for the black children in Panama, Cuba, um, Brazil, Peru, all these mm. places where you, you may not even be aware that like there are black children, children there. But if you think about the lack of opportunity that we have in the United States, there's even less in a lot of these other countries because the United States, while clearly there's so much inequality, we still have more resources than maybe other, you know, other countries. So I try to use that American privilege to also empower Black children throughout the diaspora, and that's my contribution to that di to diversity, diversity of Blackness. <laughs> All right, I can appreciate that. <laughs> Daya, when you're working on your books, do you consider diversity within your characters? Um. Okay. So with my books, my books only feature. Uh, there's only two characters that are twins, and it's just them and their mom and dad. So I haven't, um, like, pretty much put any other characters in the book to diversify yet but I do plan on because my books they just teach lessons so I have two books and they just learn a valuable lesson at the end of the story but as I expand to um like teaching them things about like things in school or going out in public then I would plan on like just adding characters of like different colors so that other kids can feel represented in their books but I wanted to say something I think um what Desiree said about um like you know you start to see like who your main customers are and i noticed that because for last year i do a lot of vendor events so a lot of times i'm at like um like black expos or like natural hair care conventions and i do like really good sales and then i did do an event where it was like in, hosted by like a, an asian community in new york city and i just saw like a drastic difference even though it was like the same amount of people there but I was like the only African American there as a vendor. So it was just like, you do start to notice like, oh wow, like I see who like supports me and who's like buying our books more on the shelves. And like you said, I think Veronica said like, all kids should see that. Like it shouldn't feel like, oh, this book has black characters on it. This means only black people can buy it. Like it should be, no, everybody can buy it just because it features those types. Because you know, we as like, when we were younger, we bought books with all types of characters on it, so. Just kind of taking back off what everyone said. <laughs> All right, that's cool. So I want to move on to the process. For those authors out there, or aspiring authors out there who are thinking about creating a children's picture book, um, what is the process that you guys use? And I know that's a long, broad term, but let's just stick, <laughs> let's just stick with the story idea. So what's the process that you guys use when you're coming up with an idea um, for a story that you want to tell within that book? And Whoever, whoever got the uh, answer first, you raise your hand. I'll come to you first. If other people need to think about it. All right, so I'll come to you, Keisha. Oh. So for me, with it being my first time, I really didn't know where to begin, but I had the idea in my mind. 
So for me, I don't know about the other young ladies, but I'm not a artist. So basically what I did was I made sure that um, we worked with the editor, we worked with the illustrator, and obviously we had a publishing company. So for me, what I did was I explained the story to the illustrator and it actually worked out really well. He was a very young guy, about 21, and he had mild autism, but he was a very good artist. So we met with him, basically told him what our ideas were, and I gave him pictures that I just found to kind of create my story along the way, lined them all up. I wrote the story, put the pictures next to it, and then he created the actual background. So if I said that I wanted... For example, I'm sitting at a desk on one of the pictures. If I wanted a cell phone, there was just a lot of dialogue. There were some pictures and there was some dialogue, but because he had a very creative imagination, he was able to bring my story to life. Because once you get in the intricate parts about it, as you ladies might know, it's almost like coloring a book. You want the walls to be green. You want the outfit to be pink. You want her to have on earrings or no earrings. So it's very, very, very intricate. So there was a lot of back and forth. I would definitely do it again, but I would say that the illustrator that we use, he had a very good imagination. So pretty much whatever I explained to him, he was able to bring it to life. That sounds good. I appreciate that information. Jaya, what's your, what's your, uh, your process of coming with the idea? Before we can even get to the illustration, <laughs> I, I need the idea of what the story is going to be about. So how do you work on creating ideas or coming up with ideas? So my books, I kind of consider it like a black Dr. Seuss books because they're rhyming stories. They're short. So I just kind of look at it. I write it down kind of in the format of a poem. It's not a poem. It's like a regular story, but it rhymes. So I think of what lesson I want to teach. So like my biggest seller is um, Jada and Jada in the Great Big Messy Room. So that one's about teaching kids like how to keep their room clean. And then so I start with the lesson and then Sometimes I think the tricky part is just kind of creating the rhyming word so that it makes sense. Um, and then, like you said, from there, um, I found the illustrator and I did the self-publishing route. So I went through a different site and they um, published and printed it for me. And I've just been selling it on my own. So that's been my journey as an author. OK, Veronica, how do you process coming up with an idea for your story? Sure. Uh, so I never forced myself to write anything I have to it has to be like an idea popped in my head and if it keeps me up that's how it becomes a book so the first uh, my first book I know I can I really was just cooking and just the words from the like the first couple pages came to my mind but I knew I wanted to create a book that would make children globally aware and to encourage them to learn different languages and so it's about you know a high school valedictorian um, and she's basically talking about all the things that she's been you know, told um, to make her believe she knows she can and to believe in like her full potential. And then the second book, King Khalid is Proud. I really love learning how to code and I have a godson. And every time I go visit him, he'd be playing video games. And I'm like, why don't you code your own game? And he's like, what are you talking about? You know, he didn't even know it was an option. So then I was like, okay, well, let me write a book <laughs> to make sure that children know it's an option. And as someone who is a creative, um, and just knowing, you know, the buying power for Black America, it's like, I just wanted to make sure that children know that there's power in creating something that's their own. Um, and so I basically took the theme of that, of creating versus consuming. Um, and the title is King Khalid is Proud. So I knew I wanted to talk about the difference in being proud when, you know, what it feels like when someone tells you they're proud of you versus when you accomplish something that makes you proud of yourself. So I took those kind of elements and then I turned those into a children's book. That's excellent because we're, we're teaching ownership within the process of, of creativity. Um, so that's, that's a really good thing. I, I like both those concepts. Um, Des Desiree, what's your process when you're trying to put together a book? So much like Veronica, I kind of draw experience from everywhere. Um, I really, I use my son a lot, <laughs> like little things that he says or does. And I'm like, oh, that's an idea. So I have like a running list of just ideas. Mm -hmm. um, my first book, though, The Brilliant Brown Babies, I knew I wanted to write a book about um, that's explaining how amazing it is to be um, you know, African American or black and brown, like a whole, it's a book about the black experience, but I wanted to write it for young children. 
So I had that idea and I remember I was talking to my mom on the phone and we were just kind of going back and forth about the idea. And she actually came up with the title Brilliant Brown Babies. And as soon as she said it, I, I came home and I was able to just write the book that night because it was, it just came to me. Um, so yeah, like I know an idea is good when it comes quickly like that. If I have to think about it too much, I'm like, okay, this, this isn't, you know, this isn't my book, but that one, it was, it was pretty seamless. All right, since we're teaching some of these aspiring children's, children's picture books, creators out there, I want to talk about these characters, right? So do you guys come up with the characters in your head first and then you create a story around these characters or do you guys come up with the story and then you build on the characters? Now I know, uh, Jaya, you might have like a series of books going on that focus on the same family, I think. So once you get into book two, three, four, I get it because you know who these recurring characters are. But when you're starting that first book for that first series, um, what is that process? Is it story, character? And then talk to me a little bit about character. And I'll go to Desiree. We'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it was the story first. Um, I also, I illustrated my book as well. So that took me a little longer to figure out what I wanted the illustrations to look like. Um, so. I wrote out the story, I had the concept, and then I kind of, it took a couple days to just draw um, what I wanted the pages to look like. So my book is not, it's not really following a story, it's more of a poem and pictures going along with the poem. Um, and so I just did some sketches and, um, you know, to try to get what I wanted the feel of the book to be. So and like in my book, all of my characters, um, they have these afros with no eyes. So um, that's the, that's what I wanted the, all of the characters to look like. And from there, um, you know, I started looking up on, I would Google like fun kids clothes and things like that to like see what I wanted them to wear and the colors. I would play with the colors and things like that. But um, I definitely came up with the story first and then sketched out what I thought um, I wanted the feel of the book to be. And Veronica, when you're looking for characters for your books, um, what's your process on building characters? Well, like Desiree, it, I definitely go with the story first. One thing I was intentional with my first book about making sure the little girl had um, deep brown tones because there's so few books with black girls that have like darker skin tone. So the things that I'm like was, the things that I was intentional about is more, um, obviously you start with the story, but then when you're dealing, I'm not an illustrator, Desiree, I wish I could be an illustrator. <laughs> I wish I had that skill, but you have to be really intentional about what you want people to look like and the kind of what, who you want represented. So as I mentioned before, um, when I told my second illustrator, like, oh, you know, I want a teacher and she's going to be, oh, and I said, I want a teacher and the teacher's going to be, um, I forgot I said what exactly the teacher was going to be doing. And I specified in the directions that the teacher was a man. But because so many people are used to women as teachers and only portraying women as teachers in children's books, when the illustration came back, she, she had drawn a woman. And I said, okay, well, one, it's a man. <laughs> It's in the instructions, but people are so used to, you know, seeing women in the role of teacher with teachers, yeah. which, which makes sense. But so there's certain things that I'm intentional about, like the, the, the volunteer was a black woman with locks, you know, like different things. Um, so I'm intentional about like those kind of things, but sometimes I don't even name my character. Sometimes I let somebody else read them. Like, what do you think this person's name should be? And I'll let them name it. So um, the second book I named, the, the child, his name is King Khalid. I really wanted an Arabic name and I just found one that I really liked. <laughs> that, that's cool, I like that. I'm gonna come to Jaya. What's your process when you develop your characters and is it story first or characters first? Okay, so mine is a series. So it's um, both of them feature the same characters. So um, my, like, I, like you guys see, my name is Jaya. So I wanted my characters, their names are Jada and Jaden. So I wanted to kind of just be like a rendition of like my name and um, just like common names. A lot of times when I'm doing events, selling my books, people always go, oh, that's my children's names. That's my little niece and nephew's name. So it was kind of like the popularity of the names that I really liked because then it makes um, a lot of kids like they'll buy it and they say, oh, this character has my name. So that was my thing. And um, 
Yeah, it's a little harder for me because my book only has two characters in it. So um, it just basically centered around them. I wanted it to look like me as a child. So like the girl, the twin, she has like a big Afro puff on top of her head. And it was just like, kind of like you guys just symbolizing like brown skin, like kinky hair. So that was pretty much the description I told the illustrator. Sounds good. And Keisha, what was your process when you were developing your characters and were you thinking about the characters first and then creating the story or was it the story first and then you built the characters around the story? It was for me, it was simultaneously because I already knew what the story was going to be about because I was focused on the aspect of home health nursing. So for me, the character actually is me. So the nurse is me. I didn't use my real name as Keisha and I thought about some different names that were just regular names but then someone has said to me why don't you just use nurse kiki that's like the little popular name with the songs and kids really gravitate and i was like oh okay so for that the name came later the characters i have a diversity of characters in the book because i want to show young children that you see all types of patients whether they're children whether they're adults whether the character is pregnant so for me i had different types of patients that was my goal and then again so for the next book more than likely i will continue with keep going with the nurse kiki and have different aspects of nurses and sport so that was my goal sounds good and thank you for sharing so now building the process of where we would go in our next step of creating this children's books i'm thinking illustration um keisha i know you spoke about the illustrator that you were the illustrator that you were working with um do you know mm -hmm. anything about the process of the tools that he was using was it hand drawn and then scan was it a digital drawing do you have any concept of what he was working with I do know that it was hand drawn, that for a fact. And then some sort of way he was able to turn into digital. But um, every time I gave him a storyline or what I want the pages to look like, I gave him a few pictures to kind of give him a little jump start. But after we got through a few pages, all I had to do was tell him this is what I want. And his mind, like I said, was very imaginative. So he was able just to bring the pictures to life. And so when he brought them to me first, they come out in a black and white sketch, probably like the other young ladies. And then we deal with the color afterwards. So we get the sketch down first. Got it. Thank you. And I'm going to come to Desiree last because I know you're an illustrator. Um, I'll come to Jaya. Jaya, are you an illustrator or do you work with an illustrator? I work with the illustrator. So um, I found someone through a mutual friend and she does kind of like um, with what uh, Keisha said, she he uh, she drew the pictures for me in black and white sketch, and then she colored them in, and I think she just uploaded it to Photoshop, like a type of editing software, so that's how it was able to be digital and printed, and that was her process. So when Keisha talks about she gave samples, like she got some pictures together, she got some samples so that the artist can have something to draw from, um, do you bring samples to the table, or do you just kind of verbally tell them tell her what you want and then they work from there um no so like i said mine was just like that one time thing because i use the same characters and then just basically the only thing that changes is like the scene like the sceneries that they're in but um i just described it i said i wanted little african-american twin brother and sister and just gave her a description she was just literally able to work from what i told her okay sounds good veronica what is your process when it comes to the illustration for your children's books Sure. So um, the first thing I'll say, because a lot of people contact me about finding illustrators and they're like, well, how much do you think it should cost? Um, so I'll say that I, the way I, I find both my illustrators I found on Instagram and they both had very different pricing. But once I love your work, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it happen. So like if it's going to cost me eight to ten thousand, I'll just have to find eight to ten thousand or whatever. So when I find the illustrator that I like, I hire them and then to, I'm not very detailed by nature, but this process forces you to be. So I generate Google um, documents for each page and I'll mm -hmm. go online and I'll see like an image and I'll say here, you know, like here are two children, you know, I would like my character to um, not directly resemble them, but I would like this to be the inspiration for my character. And then 
I'll write like different notes in the document and then um, in different instructions. And then I'll send that to the illustrator. And because it's in the cloud, it allows for like consistent updating and feedback. Um, Cause my first time I did it was like email back and forth, back and forth. But now that people can work in the cloud, it's just like a, a better way of communicating with someone um, who's illustrating your book. So do you get into telling them what kind of colors you want and that kind of thing, or do you kind of leave that up to them? It depends. So for the first book I did, I left all of that up to my illustrator. And for the second one, I was, you know, I was feeling the type of way. I wanted blue, something about blue. I just needed blue and I needed, you know, some golden yellow. So because I had a feeling about it, then I just said, these are the colors I want for the, um, the cover. And I would like him at some point to have a blue shirt and that's about it. Everything else was like, <laughs> unless, unless there was an illustration, unless she sent me something and I just didn't like it, then I would suggest another color. But for the most part, I leave that kind of those things up to the illustrator. All right. So we're fortunate enough to have an illustrator in the room with us. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm coming to you for the next question. So talk to me about your process when you create the characters and what are you thinking about like color schemes and is it character first, story first? And then just tell us what, how you work as an illustrator. Okay, um, so for me, the story was first. Um, I know I wanted the, the illustrations to be very simple and childlike almost, kind of like um, like black Charlie Brown type characters. Um, uh, no. <laughs> so I, I drew them, they're very simple characters. Um, I drew them out, I sketched them out. Um, and then I, took a picture of my sketch um, on my iPad, with my iPad, and I uploaded the picture to a program called Procreate on mm -hmm. the iPad. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have an Apple Pencil, it, you, it's pretty much like you're, you're drawing on the paper when you're on Procreate, and you can pick um, different colors and backgrounds and things like that. Um, so that's the program that I used. Um, once the picture was done, and I actually also added my text through Procreate as well. Um, so once it was done on Procreate, I uploaded it to um, my Google Drive and then edited it in Photoshop um, and was able to you know, edit the file and things like that when I uploaded it for publishing. But um, sketching first and then uploading to Procreate for, um, to line draw and to add color. So it's really- So you write your own books and you illustrate your own books? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, for the writers who do not illustrate, are you for hire or are you strictly all about <laughs> what you do? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've never thought about doing it for another book. I, I wouldn't say I'm an, I'm an artiste. <laughs> um, I just kind of knew what I wanted my, my book to look like. Um, so I don't, I don't know if I want the pressure of <laughs> drawing for someone else, but um, I don't know. You never know. Well, if you, you want to know, like to take you, right? I mean, if you want another stream of income, that, yeah, that, right? could, that could be something you could think about. So I want to uh -huh. talk about the money, the cost, right? And I'll come to Jay at first. What, what's the cost like for your first book? And then going forward to the other books that you wrote, did anything change since you now got like some knowledge and you understood how to do it? Um. Okay, so for me with my illustrator, we kind of have like... A contract so she pretty much charges me the same rate whenever I tell her all right so I'm doing another Jaden Jaden book like she already has everything saved on her computer so she's like all right and I just um, pay her a set price um, she's very inexpensive because she's like just a small business she doesn't really promote herself that much and then as far as the printing company I found when I first started, I was doing like an American printing company. So my books were a lot more, but I didn't want to charge a lot for them. So I was like, all right. So I wasn't making as much profit. But then when I kind of did some research and found a printing company overseas, the price per book dropped like drastically, like six, seven dollars per book, like a lot less. So um, I wouldn't say it's too expensive, but um yeah, so that was pretty much my process on cause. And then I saw my books for only $10, so it's not too expensive to be for them to be printed out. So if it costs 6 or $7 to get it printed, does that include the shipping? Oh, now I'm telling have? all my secrets. <laughs> well, that's a, hey, thousands of people. Thousands of people. 
But does that include yeah. the shipping? Like, let's say if you're overseas vendors in China, like you got to pay for that shipping as well. Does that, is that factored into the cost? Yeah, that's why I said it's a lot. It's a drastically cheaper difference, even including the shipping. So, but I was always charging like 10 to $12, even when I was doing like printing them here in America. Okay. So don't give me your actual prices that you, <laughs> you pay your illustrator, but I want you to give the folks out there listening a price range so they can kind of evaluate, you know. Their like how much I pay my illustrator or what's like a, because I've seen like an illustrator where like for a book, she's charged $200. And then someone told me literally on the phone, a girl two days ago, and she said she was uh, paying her illustrator $2,000. So I think it's just kind of like, I don't know. Like, I guess it's kind of like what you want. Like, I think Veronica said, if you see someone's work, you'll make it work. If you want, if you feel like they're worth eight grand, then you'll pay that. So I would say like to people that are listening, look at that person's work. And if you feel like their price is worth it, then I will never tell you like somebody's not worth that price. Cause I like, I hear people say that. So, but um, no, my, my list is definitely on the much cheaper end. But I really love her work also. If she was giving me cheap work, then I would say, okay, don't go to her just to save money. Go to who you like. All right, sounds good. Miss Keisha, what is, what is your process like when you work with the illustrator and just the whole process of paying for your books? Um, sh if you like to, share with us what, what all so of that is. So my process was slightly different because honestly, it was, I was on a team. So we had um, a young lady who, brought us on our team, it was all of our ideas. So I'm a part of a publishing group. So what our contract was, it was a bunch of nurses, several of us. One person took the lead, developed a publishing company. Then that particular person, she put everything together for us in a contract. So she found the editor, she found the printing company, she found the illustrator. So pretty all, everything I had to do, was write the book and leave my let my imagination run wild, literally. So all the intricate work, all the um, some of the codes that you have to use for your um, scanning, that was all included in my contract. So I didn't do it from the ground level as most of the young ladies. Everything was in my contract, so mm -hmm. it was a little easier for me in that sense. But now that I know what needs to be done. It could be an expensive process. So we got a good deal because we were a group. Okay. I just got one question about that. So she created the publishing company. Are you guys all co-owners of that publishing company or she's the owner of the publishing company? She is the owner of the publishing company, Discover the World of Nursing. And okay. then we fall up under her. So if we were to create another book, it would fall up under her. Or you can branch out on your own and do your own thing. We weren't she didn't have us married to the contract. You're free to, it had a lot of free power within the organization that we were in. So it was just like one person had the idea. Well, we had the idea, but one person took the lead to get all the details for us, illustrator, editor. Um, we had to get our own character's trademark because that's a big deal too. Like I didn't know that. So I had to get my character trademark. So that's a mm. huge, now that's very important because someone can see the book and the next thing you know, they could develop the same idea the next day and you'll have, there's nothing you can do about it. All right, good advice, guys. Listen to that. Let me come to Miss Veronica. Um, what, is, what is your, I know you threw out some numbers earlier, but what is like the monetary process for you? So um, let's see. The first illustrator that I, I used, I think it was about $260 per page. Um, and the way that I paid for it was that I took pre-orders. So I started a pre-order campaign and I paid up, I paid up front out of my pocket for about three illustrations, well, character development plus two full illustrations. And then I used those illustrations to create an online pre-order campaign. And the money that I collected from that pre-order campaign, I used to fund the rest of the illustrations. Oh, that's a good idea. So if you guys don't have the funds initially, you can definitely set up a uh, pre-campaign to, to get some yeah. funding. And Keisha talked about working at, with group economics. So if you get a group together, you guys can equally put in some money and then fund your project that way. So now we're going to come to the illustrator. We're going to just start calling Desiree the illustrator. Actually, can I, can I build off something Keisha said right quick? That's sure. really important. Okay, so Keisha talked about trademarking your 
character. So one thing I'd never thought about before publishing books, obviously you think, you know, you're going to copyright it, but you never think to put a, put aside money for legal fees. Mm. I have had to hire a lawyer three times um, because people have stolen my character and you, you can't control whether someone steals it. But the point of registering a copyright or trademark is if you don't protect it, then there's no point in registering it. So I've spent thousands also on cease and desist. And um, one of these people had to pay up. Somebody in the UK had taken my character um, to use it for products. Somebody in Massachusetts of all places had take copy and pasted my character into her children's book. And my friend happened to discover it. And then I had to hire a lawyer, lawyer to adjust that. And then another children's book came out um, and it was sad because it was a mom and, you know, black mom and daughter, and they came out with a book and they had hired a back to illustrators, someone really inexpensive on Fiverr. And that Fiverr illustrator used my character and built upon my character. So then I had to send them a cease and desist. So when you're hiring an illustrator, you really do need to make sure they're reputable and that they're not ripping off other people because you will find yourself on the other side of some kind of legal, um, legal letter or criminal like uh, not, cr yeah, not criminal not criminal mm -hmm. but like you might you might have to come out your pocket and I've had to like collect money from a lot of people who some who knew and some who didn't know well thank you for that advice because now Veronica you got everybody looking at the illustrators with the side eye all right mm -hmm. so now now we're gonna go to our illustrator in the room we're not gonna give her the side eye but just <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I know That's you funny. don't have to, I'm assuming you don't have to hire an illustrator because you do all your illustrations, but mm -hmm. since you're an illustrator and for the illustrators out there, what kind of tools are you using? Because I know you mentioned the iPad and the app that you use, but maybe you started with something else earlier. Maybe you're looking to jump to something else or you wish you had something. So what is that like? Um, so right now I just use my um, sketchbook and my iPad, but initially I did, it was a, it was a process because I had an older iPad that wasn't um, compatible with the Apple Pencil, the new Apple Pencil that came out, and so I had to buy a new iPad. Um, so, you know, there are some costs up front as far as like getting your equipment. So you'll need an iPad, an Apple Pencil. Um, the Procreate program, I think, is, I think it was 10 or $15. Um, and then from there, just, you know, the Adobe programs like um, Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Illustrator, things like that. You can do month by month subscriptions, um, but when you put them all together, I think those are probably like sixty dollars a month. So it actually might be cheaper for me to hire an illustrator because <laughs> 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 um, there are some some costs up front when you're first starting out. I mean, as as it goes on, if you're illustrating your own books more, uh, you know, you won't have to buy new iPads every time you do it and things like that. But um, uh, at first, there are some upfront costs to to making sure that you're you're able to illustrate in a way that looks professional and is engaging and you know um, able to do it in a in a way that's good. So, guys, we talked about the process of building story, building characters. We talked about illustration. We talked a little bit about the financing. So, I'm sure the people out there want to know, since you guys are like experts now, um, what <laughs> projects are you guys working on? what's coming out next and i'll start with veronica so uh let's see i would say i'm working on probably around three projects for my personal like i think the next book that i'm going to come out with will be a coloring book Aww. um i think that's what my next project will be i've already put out so, certain inquiries to illustrators um again i talked earlier about black baby books uh the instagram platform that makes it easier to discover children's books with black characters. That is one of my favorite things that I own. <laughs> it's so much fun um, to get to um, help promote other authors' work, but also under that brand, we're currently brainstorming like different products that are focused around literacy and representation that we can off offer under that brand. And then the third thing that I'm working on is a concept that I'm developing for an animated series. And that will take a lot of fundraising and a lot of work. And it's totally something I have no idea how to do it. I just know that I know how to get things done. So I've been, you know, just writing the concept for that. And I'm really excited about that. That, that I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. All of those things I'm excited about. So that's what I'm working on. 
<laughs> Excellent. Jaya, what are you working on? So um, mine is like, I pretty much have branded like Jada and Jaden, like uh, someone said about like trademarking that name. So um, with my books, I have the two books, which are the series. And then I also sell t-shirts featuring the characters and tote bags that have the characters, which I make like all here in my room. <laughs> so um, just kind of making it like a collection that I like my goal is to one day like see it and like target like with the t-shirts next to the books and just the bags and just more like accessories to go along with it um I also am like starting like a consulting company as far as like because so many people ask me to kind of help them with a lot of the questions that you ask here like okay who do I go to like so just kind of helping like friends and other people that have reached out to me on how to like how to walk them through that process of self-publishing it sounds like you're turning your books into a franchise and that's good because <laughs> again that's more streams of income right so not only are we doing books we're doing illustration we're looking at merchandising um yeah so it's kind of like just growing the merchandise size side of it because I, i've gotten a lot of orders and people are like oh i like these t-shirts they're so cute like you don't see how we said we don't see a lot of black characters in books when we go in like children's place in these stores you don't like you know, you see JoJo Siwa like everywhere, but you don't really see a lot of like characters that look like us. So that's something that I definitely want to keep growing with that, with selling like clothes with the books. Thank you very much. Keisha, what's next for you? So for me, um, I have some ideas about another book. The story hasn't really come together yet, but definitely like Veronica was stating, this time around, I would like to put an activity book along with it. So that way, Again, as children learn about nursing, they're also learning different aspects about nursing, whether it's words, whether it's procedures, just kind of introduce them to some terms that we utilize in the nursing field. In addition to that, right now, since health awareness is such, you know, it's the year of health awareness, what I've started doing, like the other young lady was saying, was adding merchandise to my website to bring along health awareness as far as social distancing, hand washing, stand six feet away, things of that nature. So a combination of the two currently right now, but like buttons, t-shirts are really where I'm mm -hmm. going at this moment. Sounds good. And Miss Desiree? Um, well, my merchandise is actually coming out today, so I'm excited Aww. about it. <laughs> Um, and like I said, I have a, a running list of, you know, different ideas, but my next book is going to be focusing on um, social emotional wellness in young children. Um, so I think that kind of ties into, you know, what I do for my profession and it's something that could be used in counseling sessions with students and hopefully in classrooms during circles and things like that. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And just um, shout out to Veronica and Black Baby Books too, because yeah. that has really been a, such a great platform for getting my book out there. Um, so shout out to. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your support. <laughs> so guys, this is my last question before we wrap this up. Um, you guys are giving out great advice in terms of how to continue to build on the, the platforms that you already established with your books. Um, you talk about selling merchandise, you talk about workbooks to go along with the books and that kind of thing, which is great. No one mentioned uh, film media. So are you guys looking at doing cartoons, web series, or movies with any of your cartoon characters? Did you say animated series, Veronica? Yes. I did. I said animated Okay, that's series. why I thought one. So you're working on an animated series? Yeah, that was the third thing I mentioned the, okay. that I was working on. Mm -hmm. Anybody else working on any animation or short films or web series or thinking about feature films? I haven't thought of any, I haven't thought of animated series, but I do, because I have Jada and Jaden series.com, I would like to see it um, become an app. So, and I think like you said about coding, like I've actually started taking like, cause my degree has nothing to do with coding. I don't even know where to start. And so I would love to see it turn into like a game or just like an app for like younger kids to download so they can see the characters and just kind of have fun with that. So there you go, authors. We're looking at apps. We're looking at TV projects. That's what you guys need to be doing. You got to build on that brand. Yeah, I want to thank you ladies for coming through and being a part of the Black Pill Radio Show.